Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. We have a unit square, a semicircle, and two circles. And we're going to be finding the radius of the smaller circle. Okay, at this point, if you wanted to try the problem yourself, go ahead and pause the video because we're going to get into the solution now. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we do know that this is a unit square so each side length is one so i'm going to start by marking some of the centers here so let's say this is the center of the semicircle this is the center of my small circle and let's say this is the center of my larger circle okay since this is a unit square uh each side length is going to be one half so this should be one half and the other one should also be one half so let's go ahead and make some connections here as you know, with all these puzzles, it's always a good idea to connect the centers of the circles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We'll make a lot of connections here, but here's the idea. Okay, we do not know the radius of the larger circle either. So we're going to find that first. How about that? So let's go ahead and find that. And then using that value, we're going to be using the radius of the smaller circle. Okay. All right, so I'm going to form some right triangles here by making connections. Let me go ahead and connect these as well. So that's going to look like this. And then I will be drawing the perpendiculars. Let's drop a perpendicular here. And let's drop another perpendicular here. We know that those are going to be 90 degrees. Okay. And then we're going to be connecting these centers as well. like this and then we'll be drawing some horizontal lines to form our right triangles it's going to be one of them okay and then we'll have this one as well so let's go ahead and draw that one as well okay now we got to need we're going to need more connections so let's go ahead and do this one as well so let me draw a horizontal segment here and then did we connect all the centers here I believe so let's go ahead and uh, assign some variables so the smallest uh, circle I'm just gonna call that radius R I'm gonna call this one X okay so we know that the radius of the semicircle is one half so this would be one half okay and then now let's go ahead and talk about these lengths since this is R this is also gonna be R and this is also gonna be R and this whole thing is x here, so this piece is going to be x minus r, okay? Now, what is this length? We do not know this length, so we're just going to call this one a maybe, okay? Great. This one a and this one b, okay? All right. Now, let's go ahead and uh, label more lengths. Um, since this whole thing is from the center of the semicircle to the vertex of the square, it should be one half then if i take out r that should be one half minus r but um, this part is x minus r so let me go ahead and write that first now r plus x minus r is obviously x so this piece should be one half minus x okay so we pretty much made all the connections uh, so let's go ahead and uh, write our relationships we have three right triangles here uh, I hope you can see them. Uh, this is one of them, for example. This is another one. Okay. And the third one is just this one. Let me go ahead and dot that triangle so it doesn't get too confusing. Okay. The dotted triangle is one of the right triangles as well. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and write our Pythagorean relationships. Let's start with the top one, whose hypotenuse is one half plus x. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Let's start here. 1 half minus x squared, which is one of the legs, plus, plus. Now this length, we haven't talked about it, right? That's actually a plus b. But since this is x, this will be x as well. This length is going to be x. Therefore, a plus b is actually going to be 1 minus x. So I can safely say that this length here between this point and that point is going to be 1 minus x. So that'll be 1 minus x squared. 
and the hypotenuse is one half plus x. So I'm gonna square that as well, okay? Now, if you try to get this term to the other side and subtract, it'll be easier because they're kind of similar terms and their difference is gonna be, think about this, a plus b squared minus a minus b squared is always four ab. So this is gonna be four times one half times x, which is actually equal to two x, okay? So we know that one minus x squared is two x. So let's go ahead and expand this to find the value of x here. We'll get one minus two x plus x squared is equal to two x. Let's go ahead and complete the square. x squared minus four x plus one is equal to zero. Now, if I add three to both sides, I'll be getting x minus two quantity squared is equal to three. As you know, this is a quadratic equation. It has two solutions. I can write it as x minus two is equal to plus minus root three, okay? Now, from here, I get two solutions. Let's check both of them. One of them is two plus root three. The other one is two minus root three. Now, what's x? x is the radius of the larger circle. Obviously, it's less than one, but two plus root three is way too large, so we're going to reject that and use this value for x. So now, we found the radius of the larger circle. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and use that as x first in our equations, and once I simplify the equation, I'll substitute the value for x, okay? So, let's go ahead and write our second relationships, and for this equation, I would like to use the dotted triangle, okay? And notice that one of the legs of the dotted triangle is a, and the other leg is one half minus x plus x minus r. X cancels out, we end up with one half minus r. So I'm talking about this length here. I don't wanna mark it because that'll be too confusing. But let me go ahead and do that here. My second equation tells me a squared plus one half minus r quantity squared is equal to, so that's one of the legs, this is the other leg, and the hypotenuse is one half plus r, because this is r, the hypotenuse would be one half plus r. So this, this kind of tells you why we connect the centers uh, with these problems, because it helps us, you know, write these Pythagorean relationships, okay? One half plus r, squared, that's gonna be the hypotenuse squared. Okay, again, by the same token, if you go ahead and subtract it, a squared would be four times one half times r, and that will be two r, okay? So, what does that mean? If you square it both sides, you're gonna be getting the value of a from here, which is the square root of two r. Okay, let's go ahead and save that because we're gonna be using it in our expression, okay. So that's the value of a. Now I need to write another equation that involves b so that I can come up with an equation and then put the a and b together as one minus x, okay? So which triangle am I gonna use? I'm going to be using this triangle here, okay? Start with the legs. b is one of the legs, right? As you know, this is b, so b squared plus the other leg is x minus r squared because this whole thing is x here, right? This is x and we subtracted the r from it. So this is x minus r. And the hypotenuse is gonna equal because again, we connected the centers here. So this is r, this is x, that'll be x plus r, okay? So notice that we're kind of getting similar expressions here. They all simplify nicely. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and subtract x minus r squared from here. I'm gonna show that real quick, okay. X plus R squared minus X minus R squared. And as you know, this is equal to four XR. If you square root both sides, you're gonna be getting the square root of four XR. At this point, you may wanna just go ahead and replace X with its value. Remember, we found the value of X here, two minus root three. So if you go ahead and substitute that here, and then this should give you eight minus four root three times r, and then we're gonna square root both sides to find b, that's gonna be the square root of eight minus four root three multiplied by r. Okay, so far we have found the value of a in terms of r and b in terms of r. And we also know that 
a plus b plus x is equal to 1, right? Because that would be the side length. Therefore, a plus b would equal 1 minus x. But we know the value of x because we found it initially, remember, 2 minus root 3. If you go ahead and replace x with 2 minus root 3 here, you're going to be getting the value of a plus b as a radical, which would be root 3 minus 1. Okay? So we do have three equations which we can put together nicely and solve for r. Okay? So the value of a is square root of 2r. Let me go ahead and write that down here. And the value of b in terms of r is the square root of 8 minus 4 root 3 multiplied by r. And a plus b is equal to root 3 minus 1. Okay? So this is basically a radical equation which can be turned into a quadratic, right? Well, actually, at this point, we don't really need to worry about the quadratic either because what I can do is I can factor out the square root of r here nicely, right? And then that should give me the square root of 2 plus the square root of 8 minus 4 root 3 is equal to root 3 minus 1. Okay? Okay, cool. Now, we can simplify this a little bit more, obviously. Uh, now, you might be thinking this looks like a really complicated radical expression, but it's actually going to simplify nicely. Okay? So, one of the tricks that I can use here for this radical is that I can write this as the square root of 8 minus. It would be nice if I had a 2 outside the radical instead of a 4. So, I'm going to go ahead and push one of the 2's inside as 2 squared multiplied by 3. That will be a 12, right? So I'm going to write it in this form, and I'm going to tell you why I do that, because that's going to be very, very helpful, okay? So I'm going to use some shortcuts here. So I have an expression like this. Um, so it's kind of like this. Square root of, you have something like square root of uh, x minus 2 root y. Okay, so this is a special expression if they, it satisfies the following properties. So if I am able to write x as a sum of two numbers, and y as a product of two numbers, right? Then I'm actually going to be getting something nice from here because it's going to look like this. m plus n minus 2 root mn. And that's actually going to equal square root of m minus square root of n. In this case, I assume that m is greater than n. I just got to make the assumption m is the larger number. Okay? So, this basically means that it's kind of like factoring, right? kind of solving a trinomial. So you're looking for two numbers whose product is 12 and whose sum is 8. And those numbers are 6 and 2. Okay? That makes sense, right? 6 plus 2 is 8, and 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, cool. So once you find those numbers, then the rest is kind of easy because you can now write this as the square root of x minus the square root of 2. Okay? Isn't that very nice? Because now it's going to cancel out. There you go. Root 2 cancels out. We end up with this. So my goal is going to be now to isolate r. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by root 6. Okay. And then what we can do is we can actually square both sides at this point. We don't need to rationalize any denominators. Let's go ahead and square both sides. Then I'll be getting root 3 minus 1 squared from here and 6 from the denominator. Okay. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more um, by expanding this. That's going to give me, you know, from a minus b quantity squared, I'll get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared divided by 6. And that is actually equivalent to 4 minus 2 root 3 divided by 6. And obviously, this can be simplified. We can divide everything by 2. And r would be... 2 minus root 3 divided by 3. And that value makes sense because root 3 is about 1.7. If you subtract it from the 2, you're going to get something like 0 0.3. Divide by 3, you're going to get something like 0 0.1, which makes a lot of sense in the context of our problem because the r value is actually pretty small if you look at it. And so this, this solution makes sense. And by the way, we only have one solution here, so we have to accept that, right? Okay, so this is the r value, the radius of the smaller circle. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Please comment, 
subscribe if you haven't done so like and until the next video take care bye bye